we've heard and we know the statement concerning Torah, at kihen chayeno. That Torah is meant to shape, to mold, not only what we study, but how we live our lives. Um, I'm delighted to introduce a person who has made a, a, an incredible impact on Jewish education using this very notion. And the program she founded and run is called Pedagogy of Partnership. And for the very first time I came across her work, I was very taken by the, by the tagline, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well. It's how we learn is what we learn. We heard earlier at the opening of the conference that equal attention and focus, if not more, is granted not only to the letter of the Torah, but the parchment, the way it's delivered, is as, if not more, important. Dr. Arit Kent developed a pedagogical partnership, and it's now with uh, Hadar's partner with them to bring it to day schools. And what we'll do in this session is get insight into what as you, as you, uh, it's known PAP is, PAP is Pedagogy of Partnership, what the program is, how it affects and how it molds the integrity of the student, and most importantly, you'll, you, you, you'll become acquainted with the triangle between partners as we learn and as we partner with the test. Without further ado, Dr. Arit Ken, I should mention that Arit and I, and uh, as well as other programs, we have been brought together by the Neighborhood Foundation, and we have been working together for a number of years now, learning from each other, and it's been really a great pleasure to work with her and learn from her and her team in our work at JLI, and I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Arit. Thank you so much, Abayman. Uh, I represent um, PAP, the Pedagogy of Partnership, and it's a research, uh, it's a edu Jewish educational model and professional development program um, that focuses on teaching core skills and attitudes to help us strengthen how we engage in Jewish learning and how we engage in meaningful conversations with one another. Um, and this work originally, as some of you may know, grew out of research that we conducted on covered learning um, and helping to that research helped us pinpoint much more specifically what are the skills and attitudes that students need to engage interdependently in deep, meaningful, robust learning in which they're building relationships with one another and with the text. Um, because we saw um, and experienced as educators ourselves um, that that doesn't just happen naturally and that there are skills and attitudes that can be taught um, to help make that happen. Um, so we work currently with teachers, helping them teach students these skills and attitudes in an explicit way. Um, and in this way, our tagline, how we learn is what we learn, um, that tagline becomes one of the fundamental lessons of the learning experience itself. And learning itself becomes a site for values activation. How we engage with one another and with the Torah when we are learning together is an opportunity for us to act on our values um, around what it means to engage with another. Um, so just very um, concretely, uh, we run um, with our partner Hadar. I just want to um, say hello to Jeff Stein, one of our partners of Hadar who's here. Um, two day school programs. One is a summer workshop uh, that incorporates both um, amazing Jewish learning opportunity in the morning with training in the pedagogy of partnership in the afternoon and an online community of practice during the year. And the second is a more longitudinal program for schools that want to train a cohort of teachers and a school leader in this approach and um, commit to having a school leader be trained in how to coach teachers in supporting this approach. Uh, and in addition to that, we consult and work with other educational organizations, congregations, adult learning, um, and higher ed. Um, and as you can see in this approach, there are a mix of intellectual, social, ethical, and spiritual outcomes. Um, and when the underlying value of the learning is relationship building, then, and the relationship building is with self, with other people and with Torah, um, 
that opens up the learning to all of these dimensions. So the learning doesn't just have to be about one of these things, but it actually holds all of these different opportunities for students. Um, so I want to introduce you to this partnership learning triangle, um, because this is one of the core frameworks that we have. Um, and while students who learn in pop don't learn in pairs all the time, the Khabruta framework itself represents a powerful atomic structure for understanding how people learn and talk together, whether they're in pairs, whether they're in small groups around a table, um, or just walking through life. Um, so this is our foundational framework, and really what it represents is the potential that Khabruta holds. Um, so what do I mean by that? So first of all, in this sort of idealized model, the learning that happens isn't just between two people. It's between two people and the text. There are, in this idealized model, three partners in learning. The text must be regarded and treated as a full partner. And pop learners understand that it's their job to bring the text in as a full partner, to listen to its voice, to engage with it, and return to it over and over again, and to have empathy for it. Um, Again, this triangle is supposed to be an equilateral triangle. It may or may not look that way to you. Um, but pop learners understand that it is their job to show up and be fully present and to help their partners do the same. There is no hiding out when you're in this relationship. You've got a job to do, as both for yourself and also for your other partners. The goal of this kind of learning is to seek understanding of all the partners and to help each of the partners be understood. Um, so just a quick story from a long time ago when I was teaching a group of seventh graders directly on um, a class and we introduced to them this triangle model because these are frameworks that we teach teachers but we also bring to students directly. We teach teachers how to bring these to students directly. So, we unrolled this framework for them and we're engaging in what this might represent. One of them, who was sitting right over there, where my is sitting, um, had scrunched up their face. We're going to call him David. And he looked and he said, Wait, wait a minute. I'm not sure I understand. Are you saying that the two people hold the Torah? Or are you saying? But the Torah holds the two people. Mm -hmm. uh. And we said, yes. Because um, that, that is exactly right. Um, so we want to share with you some of the values and attitudes that we see in this triangle. Um, but first, we want to hear from you um, what values and attitudes do you think one might need to draw on to create this kind of learning relationship where all the partners are present and connected and co-creating together. What are some of the values and attitudes? Take a minute to think, and then I'm going to collect some of your thoughts. And I'm just going to say in student language, we sometimes talk about that as believing that I have something to learn from my, the other, my peers. Yeah. Just Yehuda. I guess kind of similar, but a little. Um, openness to different interpretation than your own. Like looking at the text, maybe not exactly how you had interpreted it. Yeah. 
And so, and that also requires um, not just an ability to be flexible, but also sort of a belief that um, other people's ways of seeing matter deeply, right. and that the text has multiple ways of being seen. Right. That it's our job. So it's kind of building on the previous one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's something that builds in a, in a different way, or even a, perhaps maybe more a practical way. You really need to be a good listener and have the patience to sit with someone because it might take time for things to be drawn out. Yeah. And I think so, a combination of patience, the openness, but good listening um, is key to this type of study. So on the other side, um, preparing this to share. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's just as much as it's not. It's a, just as much as partner on the left. You know, you cannot call it number one. Um, partner on the left shouldn't shouldn't dominate. Also, shouldn't just say, "Well, I'm just going to listen." Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, and I would just add. Oh, Ellie, sorry. Thank you, Ellie. Um, so I would add the preparedness to share and also the understanding that that's part of your responsibility. Um, because responsibility for the partners is key. And to a certain degree, it also actually echoes the previous step. And if I'm prepared to share, it actually is I value what I have to say, which is not a given for a lot of kids. Right. But I'm just putting integrity okay. Thank you. of Torah and integrity of people. Okay. <laughs> Expanding on that, or elaborating on that, the concept of, like you said, Torah Dishma, it's about the two people down there focused on illuminating. Said, 
And therefore, because I'm here to illuminate the Torah, I want to be able to creatively share and even bring support for what the other person is saying. So if they're saying something contradictory, they say, well, actually, there's a proof like that and a proof like that and a proof like that. Ah, really? Wait a minute. Which side do you want? So you agree? I don't agree with you. I've got support. Because I've also got an attack on my support. And I've got support from my side. What do you have to say about that? So you have, if someone is not doing that, you focus on Torah and Shman Shalavarim, then you'll be able to really be a um, pop learner. Yeah. And that move of uh, finding support for your partner's interpretation, even if it's not the interpretation that you have, is a specific move that we work with students on. Because it's not the one that we naturally go to make. Right. Which we find tremendously in the town. The other person will bring lots exactly. of support to the other, and then in the end, you'll come with this, you'll say, why well, I disagree, and need that. And then how far will you be like the other person will be like that. It's kind of assumed in some of these, but I would just make it explicit, that kind of a willingness to work mm -hmm. hard. Yep. Torah is not always the most accessible text. There are you know, the challenges of language and um, that it's, it may seem irrelevant and not modern. So really a, a, a commitment to, I'm gonna go for it even though this is really hard. Yeah. And I would just add, because I think we're always coming back to all, we, we wanna think about all our partners, because it's when all the partners come together that we maintain this, the wholeness. Um, that sometimes working with other people is really hard too. And we have to also hang in there and learn how to do that and get better at doing that. So it's to get better at learning, hang in there for working with other people and for working with Tara and bringing those all together. So I told you that when I just said Debbie made a work in Sparks, um, that the learning is the work and it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. so, the learning is the work and it's in the middle. Yeah. It's that shared space in yeah. the middle. And actually feel this crying out that maybe those are the hidden sparks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And did you see what you did? Oh. <laughs> and we talk about if these are when these are not connected, we just have lines. Like one, you know, and it's about the learning that brings all of these into connection that we create a full whole life thing. There was another hand. I mean, would you, would you say that God-centeredness is uh, one of your values? Because uh, it feels to me when I look at that triangle that whether you're looking at it as God holding up or you're holding up Torah or Torah's holding up you, it's in the center. Like, it's um, in a triangle. It's, it's, it's the pinnacle of the triangle. It's sort of in the center of the two people. Mm -hmm. In, where in here? The Torah. The Torah. No, the point of the, the, the top point. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I, I'm asking, is God-centeredness a value mm -hmm. that you would say is espoused by your mm -hmm. model? And and how is it applied? Or is it applied? I would, I would say relation, relatedness of, with God, relationship to God, I think this model, for many, like for me personally and for many people, Torah is sort of a, rep, it is a way for being in relationship with God, and that is Torah, you know, God's Torah. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so, but, and I would say for not everybody who uses this model um, would agree with that. And it's a question for certain people, they might, where, like, you know, is this sort of the representative of God, and is God in, is God in this triangle, and what do we have to do to bring God into this triangle? It's part of the work. You, is that part of the work? It's part of the work. It's part of the work, part of the work for certain contexts mm -hmm. that we work in. So not every, for, in every context, that would not necessarily um, be Why the not? way that. Why not? For every single context, in learning, in learning, it is. It's, a, it's that Torah is God's so gift to the least God. The subtext. Yeah. I mean, God is Jewish. Yes. Yes. We <laughs> <laughs> do believe so. I, yeah. So I think it is a piece of the work. I think what I am saying is, it's not always the first step of the work, because that's not always the place 
to start with everybody, that there are different ways that people access this. And for some people and some students, the access point is actually they're really committed to their peers and not so much all this other Jewish stuff. And working on this and helping them explore what it means to be understood and not judged, and then helping them to understand that we need to do the same thing with these other relationships, that the Torah also can be misunderstood and, and judged, and God can be misunderstood and judged, and we have to work to understand. But we just talked about that it is Torah Lishma, as you were saying, then that, that guides that relationship between the two, between the two and the mm -hmm. Right, but I think what she's saying is exactly what the Rush says in Maseret Nedarim, that, um, to address my next question, um, is that by us simply focusing on two people learning the way pop defines with respect and integrity, therefore they will then arrive over time at the point where they'll realize, ah, Israel oraita bekut shabarich o'achadu, that Israel and the Torah and the Kaddish Baruch Hu, it's all one. We don't need to start enforce start it on them. You start with Yabon Yishim. Say what's your name again? And Orit. Orit. Start, wow, or Orit. You need to do it. 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 I need to run by my remarks with you. No, I think, right, it's not that they're going to get, 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 they will come to that realization that you want them to realize, but don't enforce it on them. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I was just wondering how it does with the espouse slash applied values, which is what we're sort of focusing on here. Is um, is it, I, my question was, is it a value of pop? Mm -hmm. Is it an espoused value? And does it get applied? So I hear, <coughs> I hear the applied part now. That mm -hmm. It's something that is built in, is supposed to organically emerge, it sounds like, <coughs> from the, or, the work that experience. people are doing. I, I mean, it's organic in the experience. It's not organic in what the teacher needs to do to help the student get there. Does it also reflect yeah. <coughs> the Yes. Uh, <coughs> sure it's value. Yep. There's yeah, and, and that underlying yeah. yeah. And and that's the big help to they to they us to to a shim. That that's the aha for the rap of the mothers, a nice pathway. And the idea of and the idea that we're all created with an Alkim is right. a piece of that as well. Yeah. That we have a relation that there's something about us that is already in relationship to God, whether or not we recognize that, right. but we have work to do to recognize that godliness in the people around us and to treat them in that way. And so this brings it to life. Right. Well, I mean, also, it's not topically like sort of what the pedagogy of a does, right? especially if you look at the triangle that you're here to you know, The concept of, of learning the binanima, the, the Havero skills is and a pathway to the binanima mapo understanding, right? And so that when you have that relationship like you're describing before, that person to person coming at it without judgment, coming at it without uh, <coughs> without other preservation, and then also applying that same kind of relationship to the Torah, then also become the translatable skill set that you can have to God. Right? And I would say though, again, this is about figuring out what the on-ramp is for different learners. So some learners actually start with you know Ben Adam Makom. That is an easier on-ramp for them mm -hmm. than Ben Adam Machaber. And we have to recognize that and consider that and then build experiences to help make sure that it's not just about Bein Adam Makom, but it's also Bein Adam Makavero. It's not this or that, it's all of it. And what and is the process? Did you discuss the process of making it happen? No, we're gonna right now take a pause um, to just look at a few materials that students, that teachers use with students um, so that you can explore within these materials how they cue students to some of these values that we are talking about. Um, because the idea is that everything that we provide to students, what we say to students, the learning environment, all of that can cue up 
values and how are we being intentional, intentional about queuing up some of these values. So we're going to give each table um, a different set of materials to take a few minutes to look at and talk to the person next to you um, about how you see within some of these, materi these materials some of these values that we've been discussing. What are some of the values that are implied and being explicitly taught through this kind of learning and that we can make more explicit to our students 
as part of the learning that we do with them. Um, but for those of you who have more, you know, topless questions, I'll be around for the next day and a half, so please find me. And I want to just turn things over to Rabbi Mintz. Thank you, Arit. So just to close things up, we have, our time is limited, so let's go around from table to table. How might you see this discussion informing the integrity of the value system of our students? Beyond, outside the classroom, and beyond the text. Okay. I mean, you know, I think there are critical skills in here that we really want for our students, like perspective taking, humility, um, you know, things like that, that I think sometimes we take for granted. So I actually really like the way some of these cards are written, or we're actually giving them the language, because if there's one thing that kids are, you know, really need to work on is the language. You know, we, we, we like to throw around the values that we want for that. Oh, you should really practice your humility. But how do I do that? And actually, the language is very powerful, so I really appreciate seeing the language. Just, this table had some card artifacts that I'll pass around for everyone to see. Thank you. Um, how about you answer this question? So when you talk about values, uh, I think that one of the things that this, this does um, in, in bringing a parallel between, um, we talk about either the other one or the other one, or just looking at your, your, your person partner and your text partner, um, in bringing some parallelism there. It, it, I think that's value, that's valuable, and to some degree we know, and again, as I said, I think some of our kids, and in some communities one dominates and some other communities don't dominate, but some of our kids are coming to the table with an innate respect for the text. The Torah is Torah, it's God's Torah, I respect that. And the other people, not so much. Um, and, 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 and then other kids are coming to the table with completely the opposite perspective. You know, I get along with the people, but I don't know why this God thing so much. Um, and, and putting the, the, the parallelism in place um, informs that value, and, it, and it, it speaks to it in both ways, again, whichever side you're coming from, it speaks to the need for those both to be in place. Excellent point. Yes, you have something very important, and that is that. I've come across dozens of organizations in the nature of my work, and I think that the goal of this organization is one of the most fascinating I've seen in my life. Um, I'm an organization that involved in Israeli government building some kind of museum in Israel that is to facilitate this kind of discussion and bring CEOs from around the world to come and learn the secret of the Torah among the Jewish people, which said it on Kaputa. We've got to talk about this. And bottom line, I think it's not just relevant to how to relate to man, wife, business partners, decision making in leading a company and making the right decisions, becoming wealthy. This is one of the most fundamental um, skills that a person needs to have in his life. That's what we were talking about. These are life skills. Well said. These are not just learning skills, they're life skills that people so need to have good, good relationships, okay. good marriages. I mean, Really it's beyond education, Ori. It's yeah. taking o taking the aura of Ori beyond outside the classroom yeah. to marriages, <laughs> to <laughs> corporations. <laughs> I mean, the next year, this should be yeah, this should be a time, not just for marriage. educators. <laughs> bring you bring all CEOs to the conference <laughs> next year. Have them have them learn the skills. You know, as you really was saying, the secret teaching this to the world. I cannot remind. I'm uh, I'm recalling what the Talmud says, and it, it, it kind of wraps up with the discussion with uh, uh, the uh, discussion of. You know about Milcham Tashel Torah. The Talmud says in Erevin that Shalosh Shanim Nechlaku Beishama Beitil. For three years they debated, fiercely debated, until a voice appeared from heaven. That's the top part of the triangle, saying Halacha Ki Beitilo. And actually, Eil Veil Dibur Lekim Chaim. They're both are right, but Halacha Ki Beitilo. So the Talmud asks, why? Why Halacha Ki Beitilo? And the Talmud says words which really, really summarize this session and so much more than this session. Is that because number one, Beit Hillel, they were nochim va'aluvim. They were humble. They were gentle. They were submissive. And how you shonim divrei beishamai v'divreim. They would study and quote and give respect to the words of beishamai as to their own. And finally, this is the clincher: how you makdimin divrei beishamai v'divreim. They prefaced. They gave more respect to the words of their opponents over their own. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, halacha ki Beit Hillel. And I think that really talking about uh, the, uh, the sanctity of, of, of Torah and, and halacha 
is all based. So the, the, the veracity and sanctity of the upper part of the triangle in many ways is contingent upon, fueled by, molded and shaped by the bottom two, two, the, the two people, Bishan and Betilo, and every discussion has a Bishan and a Betilo. So that, I think, it really teaches volumes about, you know, the first progress in pedagogy was Bishan and Betilo. And I think we can learn a great lesson from how they uh, interact with each other and how Arit and her team is really taking that torch and illuminating the lives as we discover not only the classroom but of corporations as well. So thank you, Arit, and closing remarks. Uh, I was limited to closing remarks. Just I, think, I think we actually are going to close because we have to go, Davin. Um, it is such a pleasure to get to share just a little bit of this work with you. Um, and it's been amazing to see how learners of all ages, from little, little, little ones to you know adults, are able to find an entry point in this to really enrich their self, their sense of their Jewish soul. Um, and we look forward to continuing. And I'm here to continue to talk with anybody. And thank you for having me. Thank you.